beautiful painting. So this place, we can't imagine how sacred this because after we know Bhagavad Gita is the uh, uh, primary school. Up, up to the high school. Then uh, beyond university is Srimad Bhagavatam. And postgraduate is this Sri Chaitanya Chaitanya. We can't begin to imagine how holy this place is. This is the place where this Chaitanya Chaitanya Rita was written. And it is so sweet, the language. Every verse is, is most amazing because generally, they fall asleep. And if you write very flowery thing that people can listen to, then you can't. Uh, it's very hard to get some deep philosophy. Out of it. But in this Chaitanya Chaitramrit, there is such sweet nectar. Everything is very sweet and very simple verse. But the philosophy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is revealed in these verses of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's unparalleled, even in, from literary point of view in Bengali literature, no literature to compare. Many literatures are so flowery but no philosophy. And some literature so full of philosophy and no flower. But this is everything combined. Krishna's Kaviraj is written in so next to me. This Chaitanya Chaitanya And this is the place. And our Naratam Baba, he's keeping so nice care. Unfortunately now he's taking so nice care, he won't even let us go inside the room. Before we used to go, we could all fit. But now somehow he's decided nobody can come inside, so we're stuck. So slowly, slowly, we'll all get chance. Uh, we'll do American system. Saraswati talk simple language, but it is so Samadhi of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, and Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami. We saw real Samadhi of Raghunath there in Gopinath Mandir, and Pushpa Samadhi is here with other two Goswamis, Raghunath Bhatta, Raghunath, uh, and uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj. So we'll circumambulate this place, and then we're going to go see the tongue of Govardhan. Beautiful. New trees. And two trees. Been here for about 40 years on the banks of Shamakund. So every day he was taking the water from Shamakund and using it for his daily activities, morning activities, like that. So after some time he began to think this is not such a good idea for all this brushing teeth and so many other things. Not so good idea to use this water. So he was thinking, we'll see that well in a little while, there's old Gop Kuan, cowherd boy well. If we could re-excavate that cowherd boy well, then we could use water from the well and we won't have to use water from Shamakun for all these daily necessities. So he hired some workers and they were digging and digging and they hit some rocks. Some rocks was in the way of their digging. So they just hit with the pick. They hit that rock, then suddenly they looked in the ground and blood was coming. 
and they became very frightened and they ran to Das Goswami and said, we were digging in some rock because they hit the rock. Now blood is coming, we don't know what is going on. I said, all right, all right, are you stop for the day? Tomorrow I will go and see what is the thing. So that night in dream, Giraj came to Raghunath Das Goswami. And he told that what they have hit, that was my tongue. Because if Radhakun and Shamrakun are two eyes of Govardhan, then where eye is there, then tongue is not far away, no? <laughs> so he said, that was my tongue. But anyway, they have hit by accident. There is no opera. They should not worry. Any op no opera is there. But in the morning, you should go there, very carefully take that shila, put him in a little temple on the bank of Shamakun, and with water from Shamakun and Tosi, you worship him every day. We one time, we got promised from Giriraj Maharaj that he would fix up a very nice temple here. Of course, now he's sick and he can't come, so we'll have to wait and see if we can come here and fulfill that desire to fix up a nice kund for the tongue of Govardhan. So anyway, so they made this nice temple here. This is Giriraj. You can go around. You can see on the back, a little hole is there, but he's very smooth, just like a, like a tongue on the back side of Giriraj. some time and now they're situated in Jaipur. So when they stayed in Radhakun, they stayed at this place. So here also we find most beautiful deities. Very beautiful golden Radharani and very, very... What can I say about Govinda? He's so beautiful. <laughs>
you'll see in the in the next to Prabhupada's house the library room there where they give the Bhagavad Gita class. You can see the f painting there of Prabhupada meeting with one of his son. Uh, well, he's taking one of his sons by his hand and meeting with Srila Bhakti Siddhanta in this very house. Yeah. In Kartik, also in Kartik, Prabhupada came here in Kartik and met Srila Bhakti Siddhanta in this house. So here the original shoes and cane and bed, desk, chair. Even Bhakti Salant in his old age, he couldn't bend his knees, so you'll find only Western-style toilet in all of Radhakun here in this room to the left of me, to your right. So, and inside here we have Puspa Satmadis of Srila Bhakti, as well as Bhakti Kusum Shaman Maharaj, and uh, there's a whole bunch into this room, you'll get plunked in the head by Bhakti Siddhanta's king, and then come back out this side and...50 rupees. So for the maps, he's charging 50 rupees. He's also got a book all about Chirasi Coast, Braj Mandal Prakama for 100 rupees. And he's looking for a picture of Kankan Kund. I told you before, maybe we'll see a picture of that original Kund that Radharani built, dug with her Kankan. So he's frantically looking for the picture. <laughs> Every nook and cranny of Braj Bundle. Very, very nice maps. Steps? And there are no um, water. It's empty. When? When? This is about. Time. What's the sal? And about uh, 
to 12 years at past. About 12 years ago. In that time, they come to all into Shamakun and Shamakun into Lalitakun. That time, no water there. No water. But this is the city. Yeah, the stairs. Stairs. All. You see all how deep the stairs come down. Then Valeria. Kunkunkun. These are standing on the top stair. Then down below is Kunkunkun. 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 Rani made of Kapotra. He in putting. In putting means. He, ah, he made this kund. Badranav kund. So Badranav, he, he made so many temples and kunds here. So this is his, in the middle of Shamakun, underneath the water, only this one you can see. Badranav kund. He has said that many kund. You say it to English. Yeah, he's Badranav, who was the great. Do a little kirtan for Lord Jagannath. Ah. <laughs> Here. So, Ravi. Ravi. Ravi means Surya. Shab. Huh? Banning these plastic bags and everything. Maybe one day they'll actually enforce the law. They actually have laws now, but they never enforce it. So when they cleaned the kunds, they pumped all the water from Radhakun to Shamakun. Then from Shamakun, they made a dam just behind us here, and they pumped all the water here out into Lalitakund, into the fields. And they kept all, you see all the tortoises and great big fish are kept here. So this is Lalita Devish Kund. <laughs> Wow, so big this one. So Srila Jeet Goswami we know was the nephew of Rupa and Sanatan. They had one brother named Anupama. But Anupama, unfortunately, while they were traveling back and forth from meeting the hopper boat, and he, somewhere along in the jungle, he left his body. So Jiva Goswami was probably the youngest of all the Goswamis, but certainly not the least. Our Balade Vijayabhushan and his in his commentary to Srila Jiva Goswami's Satsandar, he has written a very beautiful Mangala Charan, this glorifying Srila Jiva Goswami. He says, Yasham kipanke na kutaka pashuna vidarta karte na chaluk pididi Shuram vidar bhak sudaya maheshwaram krishnam sajivam prabhu nastunogati he says, ye shankya punkena. Because nowadays we know the word punk, but it has another meaning. But in Sanskrit, punka means mud. So he says, those shining glories of Sri Krishna, ye shankya punkena, they were trampled in the punk in the mud of Sankhya philosophy. Ishanka Pangena Kutarka Pashuna. Pashuna means this dust storm. When this dust is blowing and getting in your ears and eyes and every place, you can't see anything. So this is Kutark. You know, Tark. Tark means argument. So Kutark just means uselessly arguing and arguing about so many useless things. Hmm? Somebody says the word means like this, somebody says another word means like They just argue all this thing and they forget what is the message, what is the Divya Gyan. We were supposed to, no, we we're not, Prabhupada one time he said, we don't want, Krishna doesn't want scholars, he wants devotees. Hmm? So they just argue about, over this word and that word and this word and that, this kutar, this dust storm, one gets lost in the dust storm of kutar. 
So the shining glories of Sri Krishna, they were trampled in the mud of Sankhya philosophy. They were lost in the dust storm of useless argument. And Bivarta Gartena Chalupti Deepthim, they fell into the deep black hole of Mayavad philosophy. Looked, they became lost in that deep black hole. Bivarta Gartena Chalupti Deepthim. But Shudam, by his very pure Bak Sudaya, his nectarine words, pure nectarine words, Srila Jeev Goswami has rescued those shining glories of the great Lord, Sri Maheshwaram Sri Krishna. And that Jiva is my Prabhu and Gati, the goal of my life. So this is Jiva Goswami. He has written 3 lakhs, 300,000 perfectly composed Sanskrit slokas in his lifetime. If you take all the Puranas, 18 Puranas, you will come up with 3 lakhs of slokas. Jiva Goswami himself, written, and so nicely written. Our Gurukul Maharaj, Bhakti Vijayapur Maharaj, he told me in South India somewhere, either Sri Sampradaya or Madhva Sampradaya, he found they were reading Sri Jiva Goswami's Satsandar and discussing. And he said, well, surely your own acharyas must have written something to defeat Mayavad philosophy. He said, yeah, they have written, but these Mayavadis are so tricky. They take whatever, they take the things, they twist it around and they come, they have it come out meaning Mayavad philosophy. He said, but Jiva Goswami has written in such a way, you put it backwards, you put it forwards, you twist it around, you turn it inside out, you put it upside down, you put it, put it in the water, you twist it any way you want. Only one meaning, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bas. That's all. Hmm? Jiva Goswami has written like that. 300,000 slokas. Hmm? We haven't got to go and beg to any other sampradaya, any philosophical question. We don't have, don't have to beg. Jiva Goswami has kept storehouse of knowledge for us. So this is the Bhajan Kutir Sila Jiva Goswami when we were fixing Krishnath Kaviraj's Bhajan Kutir, then some money extra was left over, so we did a little fix up here also. And we also asked Mother Archivigraha to make this painting of Srila Jeev Goswami, so this very beautiful painting of Jeev Goswami, and Jeev Goswami's deities are Radha Damodar, so we also, this side you can take darshan of uh, Radha Damodar Ji. And you'll see on the back wall there's a picture of the real Radha Damodar who's staying now in Jaipur, original deity, carved by the hand of Rupa Goswami and given to his disciple, Jiva Goswami. That you can see in Jaipur, but our Mahavishnu Damodar. Although those are two different leelas, Yasoda Damodar and Radha Damodar, we should not mix the leelas together. Yasoda Damodar is a song we are singing. The deities of Radha Damodar, that was one time, the end of Kartik is Kartik Purnima. So on that Kartik Purnima, Sham Sundar, he was late for the Rasa dance because that is a very special night, that Kartik Purnima for doing Rasa dance. So he was very late. And when he arrived, then Radharani was very angry. And she took a golden belt and she tied it around his waist and tied him up. And then he explained that actually because it was Kartik Purnima, his mother Yasoda kept him back for some festival, some special autumn festival. So that is why he's late. So then she untied that rope, that belt, that golden belt. So then he became known. That is the Radha Damodar, different from Yasoda Damodar, which we sing in the evening. But we shouldn't mix the two. So that is Yasoda Damodar Lila, and this is Radha Damodar Lila. Radharani tied him with a golden belt and then released him, and he had good. Deities of Radha Damodar. Sri Sri Radha Damodar. Why am I somewhere else? Okay. This is a very small tamal tree. You see some very light colored leaves. These are fresh leaves. You touch them, just feel how, get some idea of the softness of Krishna's touch. Anyway, the same time that tree in our courtyard and a great big banyan tree, I mean a great big kadamba tree on Bhavan Sarovar, the same time this beautiful tamal tree, a big one was here, they all entered the apricot lila one year, all at the same time, all one year. But anyway, at that time, somebody had given donation to Brindakun, thousand dollars, that you make some screen to go over this tamal tree. At that time, somebody came from Assam, they wanted to do a whole big thing, so I said, you take our thousand, mix it all together, and they built this whole big shelter. 
but it was too late. The monkeys were just tearing and tearing on that tree. He, before we could protect him, he was dead. But anyway, new one is coming. But this is the place where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sat when he discovered Radha Kund and Shama Kund. So this is sitting place of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ka betak. It's like all time we're telling you, beto, 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 beto means sit down. So place for sitting, that is called betak. So this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's betak. Yeah. 